going back to Egypt, sometimes the concept of freedom could be nebulous. Man is free, but everywhere in chains. In the good books, after Moses led the Israelites out of a 400-year slavery, at the first encounter of an obstacle, they forgot the years of slavery and were asking to go back to Egypt, where they could at least have a decent barrier. That mentality is still here with us. My generation of Nigerians lived through the wilderness experience of the military era, and true to the hard-earned Third Republic, which was birthed on the blood of many martyrs, Alfred Rewani, M.K.O. Abiola, Kudira Tabiola, Ken Sarowiwa, and several others who paid the supreme price for what we have today. However, I have heard several in some Nigerians who were literally calling for the return of the military. The sad part was that some of them also lived through the same military era, but at the slightest exhibition of imperfection of our democracy, they forgot where we were coming from and we'd rather go back to Egypt. Nigeria became independent 60 years ago, but we cannot stop crawling back to the colonial masters, the same oppressors, to seek help on how to be human beings and manage our own affairs. The electoral law was not signed, we write to the West. There were electoral malpractices, we write to them. Chief judge was to be removed, we write. Electoral case go to court, we write. Nepotism in appointment, we write. Insecurity, we write. Religious issues, we write. Protests quelled violently, we write. I can list a page full, but even with the handful listed, the message is clear. With benefit of hindsight now, did the petition to the international community get the Electoral Act signed? Did the one on the removal of Chief Justice stop the remover? How exactly? as any of those petitions delivered on the reasons for writing them. Was the UK aware of Odi, Zakibiam, El Zagzaki, etc.? And what exactly did they do about those cases? Are they aware of the events of October 20? Or they needed the petition to get them aware? In this world of spies, the chances are that the UK saw more and know more, knows more than we do about October 20. Today, we can imagine a petition to the US asking for help to ensure that an incumbent president will accept the result of a presidential election, when even their own president will not accept the result of an election. The West have their problems too, and the thoughts that they will arise like the savior to come and fix Nigeria is but an illusion. The actions of a UK or US on the matter is driven strictly by their own national interests and has absolutely nothing to do with how important the matter is to Nigeria. Petitioning the international community may be sexy, but its value is seriously in doubt. My advocacy is that we shelve this mentality that some white men are coming from the colonialist country to save us from ourselves and take on the realization that it is Africans that will fix Africa, and Nigerians, Nigeria. I watch the disdain with which this and the savior complex about Gawan coming to UK with half of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And I ask myself, if he did, why did the UK accept him and the loot? Kept mum for 45 years, I only woke up now. Is that the country we should take our matters to? Whimpering and whining at every turn when the imperfection of our system show up? The solution to our problems are not coming from yonder. Mm. As solution much as, to our um, problems is not coming from yonder. As it's much as I, I agree with you, but I, I have, you um, your I have um, a reservation, a lot, a lot of reservations. Um, they say raise your voice and the people listen. For the fact that um, you have written to somebody outside, so that they will hear your voice does not necessarily mean that you believe that your solution is coming from there. I give you an example with our advocacy last week. I did an advocacy on Abia last week. Correct. And I know the, the issues it has generated. Not that I went to flog the governor. I just talked about Abia. Mm. And then a lot of the local journalists in the state reached out to me to say, you have done what none of us have been allowed to do. 
some of us had been arrested for even daring yep. to say some of these things. But because you are outside mm. and they can't reach you, oh, so it is easy for them, for you to talk indeed. about these things freely. Also, in the same vein, or let me use the Obaya Gospel, the Kosumele Kosu. The local press that tried to be the searchlight on what happened on the 20th of January, you saw how the federal government fined all of them. Yeah. 20th of October, mm. you mean? The 20th, 20th of October. Of October. October. 20th of October, October yes. Yeah. But CNN did an exclusive on it. Now they have been bant bantering. bantering with CNN. That CNN, even when the general testified, CNN went further to do a further yeah. expose to say it tallies with what they said. Yeah. They are lost. So that's why you hear people cry out to say, look, here we are muzzled down, we are head down. Mm -hmm. So please help us, you know, also talk about some of these challenges. And then lastly, quickly, because of time, you also see that it is shameful for the federal government when a democratically elected government, people begin to compare you with military detector and even wish that the military, that the military should come back. It's a it, shame. It, it tells a lot. it should be a, mm -hmm. an awakening call for you as a leader to say, no, 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 I don't want people to compare me to this. So for uh, me, I think that's well, why. Well, I would ask, yeah. are we really different from 1984 when we had a military dictatorship? Because a lot of the policies from there and then are being replicated now. Well, back to the recession of 1984, the worst recession in 36 years. Plus, in the days of military, you couldn't question them anyway. Today, we have National Assembly that is as dormant as we, the people, like their, you know, their, the arm or the shoulder of the executive. Again, speaking out, which is where I disagree with Gualao, we saw how the Edo elections seemed to be fair, even though it was flawed, because the US and the UK at the I, time I, I did, I were saying no, that we were, that. were going to put visa bans on these people. We see so. how the UK parliament is talking about Nigeria and also putting and you know, restrictions. With, us, with such disdain yeah. well, well, and, and a savior complex. We're yes, coming to if, save if, these people from themselves. If our leaders had this... Had, like they saved Libya had and Syria and the rest of them. Self-respect and, and treat us like human beings, mm. then a savior will not be thing that is coming from someone. A savior <laughs> wouldn't even arise at all. The question is, do our leaders, do they even understand the ridicule, the national ridicule this yeah. is to all of us, that another country that colonized us in, the, in, in this matter will now have such a session to discuss how one um, of our leaders, yes. whether true or false, yeah. brought money to them 45 years ago, mm -hmm. and then discuss how they will punish our leaders so that they can treat their citizens right. Mm. Goodness gracious. Unfortunately. It's, 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 it's. You know well, why? Well, democracy. Another thing, sorry, quickly, Evans, another thing. It is. You steal from here, you go invest in their country. You take your children, you destroy the education here. Medical you take tourism. your children to their country. Yeah. Our president had to stay in their country for, 100 for 100 days, days plus mm. for yeah. treatment. With our private president, jet president, president. president. Mm. And so when you have that kind of behavior mentality, why wouldn't they have the savior mentality? Yeah. When they're already saving you anyway, yeah. they're saving your children, <laughs> they're saving your business. Yeah. Yeah. And you know. just to tie it up to your advocacy, I, I don't even think that uh, it is relevant or necessary to say that uh, we took our case there for them to deliberate because, I mean, the, the Sorosuke ideology was a syndicated one that yeah. was wrapped around the world. Remember, before that one, there was Black Lives Matters. Yeah. This was Which just a, the world a, 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 you know, a corollary of that. And then you have um, our government mishandling the issue. But what would they Do you understand? Was so, so my, my point is that whether we invited and called them or whatsoever, the they entire world saw it. Yes. So they are taking their own decision based on their own foreign policy. And we should respect that. If uh, they want to extend a hand of punishment against our leader, they should do so. I think Ban we them be from coming. Help us, help us. Okay. <laughs> That's what I you see, I, I, I would have expected the, the parliament in, in the UK to as well want to punish Trump when they uh, saw the um, BL. <laughs> yeah. Those are you the matters. write a letter talk. to them to that effect. <laughs> do, do that. <laughs> After all said and done, 
Our country is what we make of it. Please do continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.